Today I've got three new autumn wreaths to adorn your door. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome. The first is going to be wreath number one. Got some deco mesh here. Don't worry, this is the nice deco mesh. Got it on clearance uh, two years ago, I think. Some pipe cleaners, of course. I've got some leaves left over from last year's stash. I've got some flowers I pulled off of an old wreath. We're gonna recycle these. And this is my 16 inch wreath form from Dollar Tree. They come in a variety of colors. I think silver, green, gold. Okay. Now we're just gonna start off by prepping this wreath and we're just going to wrap these around at the cross sections on the outside and then in the middle on the inside. And don't be intimidated if you're gonna click off of this because you're like, oh gosh, I can't stand deco mesh. There's no way, I don't like dealing with it. I don't like fooling with it. If you get a good quality deco mesh and you use the right technique, it makes a big difference in your wreaths, okay? I encourage you to save money where you can, but if you're the kind of person that is annoyed by shredding deco mesh, you know, buy a little bit better of a quality and try it again and see what you think. So there are 12 pieces here and we're going to start off with this deco mesh now this is just the the small deco mesh it's not the 10 inch so what is this probably five six inch whatever the standard measurements are for deco mesh and i am going to push it down into the inside it doesn't really matter where you put it you could tuck that tail on the inside you could cut it off you can zip tie it whichever way you prefer to do it but i give mine a good secure twist we're gonna measure down eight inches and we're just gonna be making small poofs. These are not going to be enormous, all right? So we'll go from the outside and then to the next one, which happens to be on the inside. We'll get our eight inches and we'll go over to the next one. If you have a cutting mat or one of those sewing mats that has the measurements on it, this could be done a whole lot easier. But for a majority of the people who watch my videos, it's probably not in your home, in your crafting, budget right now so this is another way you can get that done okay I want to save y'all money wherever I can all right so I'm just bunching it up in my fingers I'm trying to make sure that the outside edge and the inside edge or each edge are kind of tucked under where I pleat it and that helps with the whole unraveling thing too but these are seamed they have a seam on the edge which is fantastic so I'm going to continue around. We've crossed over our original point and we're going to go back the other direction. So we'll be going the opposite way that we were before. And this will have a row of poof to the inside and a row of poof to the outside. Now, if you decide that you have some 10 inch mesh that you want to use instead, you can just use your 10 inch mesh and just go around it one time and you'll probably have all the fullness you need. But we're going to make up for that by going around twice. Nice and full. Now this would be a good deco mesh for the winter time, right? But I thought it was appropriate also for the fall. Well, first off, it came from the fall section and I think cotton. And when I think cotton living in the South, that's harvest time. That's, you know, close to fall. That's when things are changing, you know? So this is my representation of that, of that cotton running through there. I'm gonna fluff it out in the direction that the poofs are. And you can see how it's looking so far. I've got some of this wide ribbon. It's four inch. It's a very pretty green, and I think it's an appropriate green going from summer into fall. It's got a kind of a warm tone to it. And I'm going to do this the same way I did the deco mesh by just grabbing a bunch of it, placing it down, and wrapping it very tightly in there. Very tight. And then I don't have to measure this time because I'm going to go over the, the row of poofs and make sure that this sits right on top. And you'll see what I mean. It's sitting right over two bubbles, right? I'm going to feel of it and you see it sits just right on top and that's the idea. We don't have to measure it again because the, we know that the poofs underneath are eight inches. So this is going to be approximately eight inches. So it's the same height. So it looks like it's floating above or just sitting on those bubbles. 
very easy to do. And this will go from the outside to the inside, outside to the inside, all the way around, okay? It's gonna be back and forth, back and forth, rather than sitting directly on top. It's almost gonna be like a side to side pattern. Hey, if you're enjoying this so far and the instructions and the encouragement you get on my channel, I would love it if you would subscribe. I have a goal of 100,000 subscribers so I can qualify for channel verification and for a silver play button. So if you're enjoying it and you'd like to be part of it, I would love, love, love to have you here. So are you pro? Do you, do you like the idea of using deco mesh or are you not a fan? Have you become a fan since you started watching my channel and I've shown you other techniques? I'm just curious because they really are pretty simple and they give you a big impact for what they are. So if you give it a shot, you just might like it. Once we've gone all the way around, I am going to, first you need to make sure definitely that you have twisted that down as far as you can, okay, that everything's very secure. And then you can just clip off the excess on the ends. Don't clip into the section where you twisted it though, because you will lose that, that uh, gathered space and you're gonna have to get another one out and do it all over again. Okay, so now you can see that these go side to side, in and out, in and out, all the way around. Just creates a little movement, and it looks like a ribbon, uh, ribbon, <laughs> a ribbon kind of wound in there. There we go, tongue twister. And then I didn't have quite enough to go all the way around, so the section right there is where we're going to put our little swag that we're going to make. Now with flowers that you get, you want to be sure that rather than having each layer stacked on top of one another like this, that you kind of twist it just a little so that you have all of your little spaces covered. It makes a fuller flower and a more realistic looking flower. So these pieces, I thought, okay, this is a pretty green, but we're going to add a little bit of yellow and orange to it, like it's, you know, going into fall. I want to see how big I want that to be and if I like the layout and then I'm going to just glue it together on each side almost identical you know we're going to use the same method easy enough to do very easy to do then we'll do the other side you can use picks from the Dollar Tree you can take apart an old wreath maybe you used last year and it's not your style anymore you can take it apart and make something new with the pieces. So I've laid this down to see how long I want this to be or how much space I want it to take. Then I've wired it together. Then I'll take another piece of wire, go right around the center. I'll wrap it a few times to make sure that it's secure and also give it a little more stability for the little swag we're making. And then I'll take those long pieces, tuck them through the deco mesh and onto the wreath form below. You don't want to pull it too tight because I don't want it to be sunk in there. I want it to be sitting on the top, just barely nestled in. And then once that's wired down, you can just start gluing in your flowers and any other type of adornment you would like to have on this wreath. It took a very small amount of time to make this wreath. It really did. That's the thing about it. It may take you a little while in the beginning to get used to techniques and methods, but once you get it and you start building your confidence, you can move on to even bigger and better things. I think this is a good, good wreath to start with. I love the colors in this little wreath. Nice. I just wanted to let y'all know also that my video Thursday is not going to be a uh, like a, a new content sort of video because everybody's pretty much going to be out and about for the 4th of July. I am just going to make a compilation video with all kinds of fall and Halloween wreaths. So be sure that you come back Thursday or, you know, the day after and watch that video. Here is the wreath number one. I guess you could call this a sunflower deco mesh wreath if you would like. It's very simple and I think that this would be beautiful on your door right now and on until the rest of fall. You could definitely use this for Thanksgiving as well. Come on over to my channel on Mondays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. I'll see you in the comments. 
wreath number two. So here's a wreath I made a long time ago, just from vines in my yard. It is 18 inches by roughly 15 and a half, something like that. Use any one you have. I like that this one is an oval for the way I am going to decorate it. So I've got some of these flowers from the Dollar Tree. These are from Timu. The green eucalyptus is thrifted and so is this branch of beautiful leaves here. It's even got a little acorn there. All right, so you know, we gotta start by assembling our pieces, pushing the foliage up and then putting these off. I'm gonna do the same thing here. It is way too big. So I am going to clip that. Same thing with the flower petals here. We're going to twist and open those petals up and that's a much better full flower. Easy twist and there it is. Okay, so once everything is trimmed down, including the, the greenery over there, we're gonna start deciding where we want everything to be. And I know that I want this to be right in the center of the arrangement we're doing, if you will. So I'm gonna put it here a little on the high side and I'll start laying down those beautiful, beautiful dark leaves. I'm gonna add some on the top of the eucalyptus, some underneath on the bottom of the eucalyptus. This is gonna be a little bit more of a moody rustic wreath that I think is absolutely beautiful with those traditional fall colors. So you let me know what you think in the end here. Go ahead and use hot glue to hold your pieces in your wreath. You'll see me add a little glue here and there, but for the most part, I have to recycle my pieces. So, you know, I don't add as much glue as I recommend you add, especially if you have wind or in your really hot areas, you know, you wanna be sure that everything's secure and not in your neighbor's yard. I'm gonna keep going around here, making this as full as I would like it. I do know that I want it to be as thick as that beautiful green flower in the middle. So I'm trying to make sure that the borders and the lines of this wreath remain in oval shape. So I'm trying to honor that by keeping that form on the side. And you can see that it is still in that, um, almost like a, well, it's an oval shape and half oval on that side, right? I'm also going to tuck some pieces right under here. I'll add a mom right here above it. And then I'll continue to add in the florals. If you have one of those little glue pots, you can dip the end of your stem in and put those in your wreath. That would be perfect. I have one, but I haven't been using it because I don't sell my pieces and I recycle a lot. But you know, things may change in the future. We'll just have to see. I've had a lot of people ask me about different pieces that they're interested in. So who knows what may happen in the future, but not happening now for sure. Okay, so then I have these beautiful rosebuds. Look at the color in these. They're, they're stunning and they look so similar to what's going on in those leaves that they just make the perfect, perfect set. And then that pop of green in there. I'm going to add a little more sunshine into this piece by putting some of those beautiful flowers from Dollar Tree in there. And I'm just gonna be placing them where they're staggered around. And I want them to be separated enough that they make a little impact, you know, that you can see that they're making that little pop here and there. I think that is so pretty. And it's one of those things about crafting when you put something that's unexpected together. And you maybe wouldn't even think about putting a flower this color in there, but in the center of those flowers is exactly the same color family as what we have in our foliage. So you might keep that in mind when you're doing your, when you're doing your wreaths and your floral arrangements. I'm gonna put one right here because we really want to extend that down. And remember, they're on wire, so just bend them. You can bend those any direction you like, rather than just adding glue to them and sticking them flat down. Let's give them some dimension. Now I'm going to use some of this ribbon that I have and I'm going to be cutting, what is that, eight inch? Yes, eight inch pieces. And then they'll be dovetailed on both sides. And we're just gonna use these little pieces of 
ribbon to kind of give it that little extra wow factor. Maybe unexpected, just a little bit of elegance. And I'm just going to add probably three or four pieces in here just to, you know, give it a little something. And it looks a little festive with these little tails poking through here. But no bow, no bow on this one, y'all. And then, of course, when you get your placement, you can go ahead and get the glue and then place that down. You can also use picks to put these together instead of, you know, using glue if that's what you would like to do. But this works for me. There are so many different ways to do things that are neither right or wrong, right? So we can do things differently, and that's okay. If it works for us, that's okay. I just like the look of this, you know? You maybe don't expect to see it in there, but it makes it personal, and it helps this piece really be something that I made my own. And it brings my heart joy to look at it, so, you know, I encourage you to do the same thing. We want crafting to be joyous. We don't want to be frustrated and annoyed and think everything's wrong. If it's beautiful to you and it brings you joy, that's perfect for your home. Don't worry, I fixed my little crushed flower up there. But I really like the look of this one and I, I hope that you like this one too. The beautiful colors. I, I really do love those colors. And hey, if you like it, could you consider giving me a thumbs up? So I know to keep making this kind of content for you. So what's in it for you when you subscribe to this channel? Two videos a week. That's right. And then sometimes you get bonus videos, which is pretty awesome, if I do say so myself. Thank you to my channel members whose money and your contribution mean so much. Wreath number three. Do you remember this, this little guy here? Used him on a wreath early in the year, and we're going to use him again. We've got some greenery that I've used in staging my pieces for a couple of years. We're going to use that. And then this is a placemat. It's almost like it's jute cord that has been decoupage or stiff. It's, it's, hard, it's still flexible, but you know. We're going to start off by pushing these grassy pieces together just because for me it gives it a more full look and I think it's going to give me the look that I like for this wreath. I'm going to cut off enough so that I have stuff, uh, some length there to wrap with the floral wire shortly. I'm going to straighten out my branches and move these up just like I did with the other ones. We're moving up, moving up, moving up. Y'all need to think outside of the box when you're doing your crafting because you're not, you're not going to find everything I find at the thrift store. And our Dollar Trees, I think we all know at this point, vary from store to store. So think of ways you can use things and what you could do to make things your own. Maybe you could starch uh, something. Maybe you could starch an old doily or something. Maybe you could use that. That would be really pretty. All right, so I'm going to take those leftover pieces we used in the, that first wreath, and I'm going to use that to attach my beautiful fall grasses down to this placemat, which is now, of course, going to be a wreath form. When I can have it overlap, I will have it overlap because I want this to look continuous all the way around and nice and full, so you can double them. I'm going to wrap it and push those ends to the back. and then keep that in a circular pattern and go around and connect the end to it. If you don't connect the end to it, it's gonna try to stick straight out and that is going to interfere with the cohesiveness of the circle and the shape of this wreath and we don't want that to happen. So I'm laying one on top of the other, covering up the stem. I'm slightly flexing out that, that metal piece that holds all of them together, you know, the stem, and I am just wrapping them around and then poking the little pieces in the back. Now the pieces in the back can be trimmed off at a later time if you would like. And just keep going around here. Everything is going in a clockwise motion. So if you start in clockwise motion, continue that way. If you start in counterclockwise, continue that way. Just overlapping, overlapping. Think this is easy to do, y'all. This is not hard to do definitely is not hard. Say it with me now. I can do this. I can do this. Can do this. 
keep going here. And I know for some of y'all, you're going to see these wreaths and you're going to be like, um, this is, I can do so much better than this. Well, that's wonderful. If you can, then I wish that you would. If y'all have not heard about the Crafty Cruise Getaway, I've got information in the description box. My friends have made so much effort over there to get that website in as user-friendly a position as it could possibly be. But if you go over there and you need more information, there are emails on there also where you can ask questions. So feel free to do that. We would love to have you take part in this wonderful experience with us. Now we're back to the end. We've overlapped, we've completed our circle, and now I'm fluffing that grass out. I want a little bit of an overlay and I want the rest to flex outward. Here is some leftover thrifted ribbon that I have. And I think I used it in another project, so I'll be out of it soon. And then one of those little wreath forms that comes in the double pack that you get at Dollar Tree. I am going to almost make what I did before with the sun catchers with the little peekaboo aspect in the wreath. By wrapping this all up, and then this will become the base for where we put that beautiful acrylic stained glass piece on there. Get back to the beginning. You can take your hot glue and glue that ribbon down on the back. You don't want your finished edge in the front. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of this wire and take that out. I'm gonna go on the inside because it occurred to me if I go on the inside and do it, when I put the beautiful deer on top of it, you won't even see how it's connected. So I thought that would be a better idea than the outside. I'm just using some of that same floral wire pushing it right down so it grabs that inside ring of that wreath. I want to position this where it's a little bit above because I'm going to add something to this. So I want to have a little bit of room on the bottom. I'm going to feed this through that beautiful jute placemat, twist it around, and then those pieces can be cut off and covered. Excuse my head. And then I'm going to go to the second section and then I'll go to the third section, wrapping it around, pressing it, cutting it off, however you like it. And if you're going to put this on a glass door, be sure that you cover up the pieces where the metal is because you don't want this to scratch your door. Or you could even put this on a window because the light is still going to go through the back of that mat and you'll be able to see the light on the deer. Okay, so it is positioned a little bit higher than underneath. I know where I want this to be. So now I can just lift up slightly and then add some glue to hold this down into that ring. It also keeps that deer from looking so tiny in this huge section. This is not a big piece. Um, you know, you could cut your placemat down, but I think that, I think this has given you enough inspiration. You just see it and then you change what you need to change, right? Not everything we do every time is something that we would call a one out of 10, right? Well, this one to me is not exactly a one out of 10, but take the inspiration and make something your own. I gotta show you different things, right? Not everything's a success. And I know that it isn't with you either. You know, that's just, we're human, we're flawed. We make mistakes, but that's okay. All right, so I'm going to add the smaller bow on top of the bigger bow. And I wanted to bring that blue denim color in because of the blue that's in the deer, in the little plaque there, or the little sun catcher. I'm gonna grab another one of those little pieces of pipe cleaner endings. So we're really saving our money here because we have double purposed the Chanel stems that we use. We used them all through this wreath. Now you can adjust your bow sizes because sometimes the loops get a little bit wonky and one's bigger than the other. You can adjust that and you can just pull it. Then you can either dovetail or slant your ends. Just give them a nice clean look. I like to leave the bottom bow with their tail just a little bit longer if they hang like this so that the smaller pattern ribbon shows a little bit more against that solid color. Then you can add some hot glue or use the wire to attach it. You can put it on the inner wreath or you can move it down or you can leave it off altogether. All together. 
This would have been a cute Father's Day gift, I think. Cute. And here is that one. Now, I do apologize. It's storming outside. I couldn't get you a shot of natural lighting through here, but take my word for it. It comes out very rich and vibrant. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And right here at the very end, there is a rectangular box. If you want to see more wreath ideas, click there and click that circle if you want to see more of me. Bye!